So, I'm sat here today with Fraser Cropper of Totally Wicked, the progenitor of the Article 20 challenge. The challenge, the progenitor, that's the word I'm using it's today. It's, it's a good word. And how's that going? How is the whole challenge to the Article 20 thing happening? Well, we're somewhat stalled at this stage that we knew we would stall at, which is waiting for a date to have our case heard. We've received in the past two months the feedback or the submissions to be more precise from the EU Commission and two uh, other member states uh, with their position which was an absolute tome many many more pages than they should have submitted so that's taken us a long time to go through um, that will then be very influential into how we then frame the oral submission that we make when we get our hearing toward the end of this year uh, and very much what we expected, actually. Uh, the, the general position for the EU Commission is it's all fair and reasonable. You know, what's the matter with the TPD? It's reflecting the needs of the sector. It's light regulation that can be simply and practically interpreted and applied. And of course, we know beyond that noise level is fundamentally not that. So our, our, our legal challenge must be able to fish, a di fish deep into that and pull out these things that we know are the fundamental things that, that are wrong. It's disproportionate. There is no basis of risk that there's been a manifestation of something which has been based upon a risk that doesn't exist, that there's no need for it to be associated to, back, to tobacco products. And fundamentally, it is not allowing for this sector to be what the sector should be allowed to be. If we get a set of judges who are well read in, who are able to see beyond the noise of these submissions from the European Union, I think we'll have a fair hearing, and if we have a fair hearing, we must be successful. Well, you're talking about a fair hearing. Um, Linda McAvan was quite public about saying that she was going to try and get support to have Totally Wicked's case thrown out. What do you make of that? Uh, what do I make of it? I, I need to be a bit more choice than maybe my brother would have been. What do I think of it? I think she should let due process do what due process does. If she is content that what she supported and led is fit for purpose, what on earth has she got to fear? That, that, I must admit, that was the question that came to my mind. If she was so confident that what she'd done was right, why does she feel the need to serry the ranks of you know, those that are opposed? The, the democracy that elects people, I miss McAvan, is a democracy that allows for people to challenge what these elected officials do. If she doesn't like it, she can always retire. Do you know, I really like your diplomacy. Well, she can. No, I've, got, I've got no issue with McAvan or anybody else like her. I've got an issue with politicians who seem to act in ways which are atypical to that which we should expect. I would agree. I would agree. So, right, roadmap for Totally Wicked between here and whenever this gets heard, because it's supposed to be heard towards the end of the year, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Towards the end of the year. Well, there's lots of other stuff going on as well. There's uh, the TPD implementation, which is happening parallel. That's a, a real dichotomous position for us to find ourselves in. What we can't allow to do is to allow that hair to go off and running uncontrolled, so we've got to be influencing that as well. So we are, along with other parts of the sector, unfortunately there's lots of tobacco involved in this as well, influencing the DG Santo implementation team. Uh, we routinely go to Brussels to support them with the consultation piece. And what we've seen actually is, is more reassuring than probably we first thought we would see. We're seeing an organisation in the European Union that we believe is struggling to make, as I mentioned to you earlier, this circle fit the square. Uh, they are listening. I think they want to do what they can to try and, yes, comply with the TPD, but also reconcile those irreconcilabilities and listen to industry. What we have to be sure is that the industry voice is the industry voice, not a very narrow section of that which purports to be industry. Yes. And we find a lot of influence that comes from companies that have been purchased by tobacco companies. They've got the depth of pockets and the capacity to resource these things. And I think they're getting a disproportionate influence and disproportionate volume to what they have to say. That's a risk. People have got to be aware of that. There are commercial imperatives in play here. Some very embedded, deep, monopolistic commercial imperatives. Uh, and just because you're an e-cigarette company doesn't mean necessarily you've got the right to have a say in things which are going to exclude the vast majority of e-cigarette companies and vendors and more importantly, not do with the regulation that the consumers need to be done with it. Yes. When, when you're talking about regulation, uh, we heard a couple of weeks ago that the, uh, the company, or the university responsible for coming up with the 
uh, the specifications for the leak-free refilling mechanism based in Athens, how inappropriate that seems at the moment. Uh, but apparently they're not going to be reporting back until June. Where does that leave the industry in terms of trying to cope with the message that's come from Brussels that you've got to have all of this, they just haven't got it designed? What well, does that mean? Well, in the obvious symbol, uh, there's no consolidated approach. There's a tacit assumption, obviously, that this legal challenge will be unsuccessful. I think there has to be, realistically, a plan for the TPD, both if we're successful and if we're not successful. Yes. I don't think there's a plan for if we're successful. Uh, there's definitely a plan that we are not going to success with the TPD will be implemented. It'll be implemented in a real blistered, peculiar, non-coordinated way, as example by what you just mentioned. There's a whole range of things beyond that which aren't all brought together into a neat package either. The UK implementation team, I'm not quite sure what mandate that's been given. The consultation document came out last week. We've got two months to consult across a very disruptive summer period as well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of motives they've got as well and, and how open they are to potentially drawing on some of those hanging threads and seeing what indeed the TPD can be morphed into. Are they willing to take a position that the TPD is impractical and needs some adjustments? How much latitude and how much leadership will the UK government therefore apply? I don't know. I really don't know. But we do know there's lots of national implementation teams all doing their own national stuff under the auspice, which is apparently the macro U EU TPD. So I don't really, I mean, we're close to it, and I still don't know myself how on earth it's going to all happen. I've got to say, I, I honestly can't see harmonisation working. Not when the skittles are falling at, at strange rates, when you've got home nations or member nations doing things their own way. And it just doesn't appear that there's any joined up thinking. But there wasn't any from the start. Well, there wasn't. Uh, and it's, uh, it's testament to the TPD that it is such a bloody mess. If the TPD was a simply understood, practically delivered, and relevant and necessary piece of legislation, I think it would have been easy to implement it. It's because it's such a monstrosity that doesn't fit that you can't bring it all together into a neat package because it's never going to be neatly packaged. No, no. So, exactly so right. you know, the, the, the reciprocation back to people like Miss McEvan is look at the bloody mess. And it is a bloody mess. It's a dog's breakfast. It is. And, and once again, let's not be seen as this belligerent part of the sector that is not willing or, in, or is unable to take its responsibilities. You know, I, I, I take that on the chin routinely and I absolutely bloody refute it. Our business and other businesses like ours know there is a need for regulation. This sector needs regulating. I want regulation. Yes. If nobody's going to regulate it properly, I'll do it myself for our own business. And there's some good things happening. The BSI pass, credit to ECTA and all those who contributed. Yes. A voluntary document which tries to take a proper risk-based, ground-up approach to defining a standard. But it's not a difficult standard to meet. It's not an easy one. It's an appropriate one. Yes. It'd be difficult for those industries who don't want to invest yes. in their responsibilities. Yes. It'd be easy for those industries to have a long-term view because it's the only thing they should be doing. It's absolutely demanding for the consumer to know that there is something that sets the data of acceptability. At the moment, we haven't got that, so consumers must also demand regulation. But don't believe just because the TPD is orchestrated through this enormous body, which is the EU, it's looking after your best interest, because it can't be in this case, because it doesn't. So regulation, categorically, yes, it is needed. Regulation that is based upon a super risk assessment that manages the risk for consumers, absolutely needed. That holds industry to account for what they should be doing, which is being open and honest with their customers, taking responsibility for the safety of their products and selling in an ethical way, absolutely. The TPD, unfortunately, does not do that. So let's not fall into the trap. It is regulation, therefore it's good regulation. No, yes. it's bad regulation, couched as good regulation. Yes, it's the very worst. It it's is. the very worst. And just as a final question, if I was to put you on the spot and say what was the probability that the challenge to Article 20 was going to succeed in a percentage terms, where would you place it? Well, it's a difficult one. Uh, Fifty-fifty at the moment, I would suggest. 50 /50. And that sounds really equivocal, uncommitted. But I can't be any more of them, to be honest. Okay. And a final, final question. Yeah. 
signatures, support for it, how important? Really important. The signature important, but just as important is, I think, the discourse that happens around those signatures. People have got to understand the threat. There's a bit of a phony war going on at the moment. 2013, when vapors were up in arms, communicating with MEPs, NMPs, that's all disappeared. So to communicate the TPD legal challenge without firstly getting people aware again of why it's happening, then we've got our skittles in the wrong order. We've got to get more people informed of what the TPD is going to do to get them then to understand, ah, that's the reason why. It's not belligerent industry. It's a responsible part of this industry that is not willing to accept punitive, unbalanced and disproportionate regulation. So the more people in industry and vapors who can communicate to all those people who need to be understanding this, formally to MEPs and MPs, but just as importantly to their friends and family who are interested in this matter. Read the TPD, Article 20, it's only five or six pages. It's actually quite understandable. Understand it, apply that awareness that you've created to other people and start to communicate with those people who are willing to listen. But there's lots of people who are willing to listen. Yes. Lots of good MPs, lots of good MEPs who have invested the time, who are real advocates for this sector and for the consumer's needs. Yes. And if we can convince those people, those right-minded politicians, then it's because we've got a good message. So let's communicate it more often to more people. Indeed, I think you're absolutely right. So thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our poncetta tree, which doesn't exist. It's, yeah, it's, a kind of, it's one of those bastard jars, excuse my French, of a, a tree that presents itself as a flower. Yes, but it's red. It is. And, and I'm overdressed as well today, today, Dave. I know I would have come in shorts and t-shirt, but uh, I wasn't aware. With your baseball cap on backwards? Uh, maybe. Got, get with the clouds, bro. Get with the clouds. Oh, I couldn't cover that very well. <laughs> Pleasure there. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks.